Okay, today I'm going to be testing if I can burn cotton just by compressing the air around it really fast. Because according to the first law of thermodynamics, when you compress air really fast, it should heat up. So I'm going to be using something called a fire syringe. And basically all it is is a cylinder with a plunger inside and there's no outlet. So when you press it down, it compresses the air inside. See how there's resistance to it? It's almost like it's a spring, it pops back up. So I'm going to be testing if I put some cotton in there and then hit this down really fast, can I ignite the cotton in there just from the heating up of the air around it from the compression. And then if I can get this to work, I'm also going to try to put my hand in a pressure chamber and see if I can feel it heating up due to the compression of the air in the chamber. I don't trust any thermometer, I want to fill it with my bare hands. Does air really heat up when you compress it? Okay, so let's see if this works. Let's see if I can ignite this little piece of cotton just by compressing the air really fast. So let's put it in my cylinder here. Okay, now let's see if I can get it to ignite just by hitting the top of it. Okay, so that was awesome. The cotton just totally lit on fire simply due to the heating up of the air when I hit down this plunger really fast. So what you saw happen in this syringe here is actually the same way that diesel engines work. So in diesel engines, there's a tiny bit of diesel fuel that's added into the pistons. And when the piston comes down and compresses the air inside there, the only thing that ignites the diesel is just the air heating up due to the compression in the piston. So with this little setup here, you can see how you can easily increase hundreds of degrees Celsius just by compressing the air in a little piston. And this was just from the speed of my hand. But what if I was able to compress much more air than this much faster? So the reason you saw this ignite in here is actually the main reason why rockets or the space shuttle needs heat shields when it enters the atmosphere again. So actually when a rocket re-enters the atmosphere after orbiting Earth and it's moving extremely fast, when you see it enter the atmosphere and burst into flames and relies on those heat shields, the reason it bursts into flames is not due to the friction of the air, but rather it's due to the compression of the air in front of it. So because it's moving so extremely fast, there's a great amount of air in front of it that doesn't have time to move out of the way. So the volume gets compressed very rapidly and that heats it up extremely hot. So astronauts rely almost completely on their heat shields to stop their whole rocket ship from bursting into flames just due to the compression of the air from the rocket. Okay, so now let's try my hand in a high pressure chamber and see if I can feel the increase in temperature. So a while ago I put my arm in a vacuum chamber. That was a little harder to build because I had to have a rigid structure, but with high pressure it doesn't need to be rigid, but it just needs to be able to hold the pressure in. So a soda bottle actually does really good because uh, they can hold around 30 PSI or more. So I've got a soda bottle here hooked to my air compressor. I'm going to duct tape my arm to get a good seal and then I'm gonna pressurize it. We'll see how high a pressure we get. Okay, so as soon as it shoots my arm back, as soon as it starts pushing my arm back, it should, um, seal for a short amount of time and it will be able to pressurize my arm in there. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, there it goes. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, that was crazy. So as soon as it started pressurizing, it got really warm. So I felt the compressed air getting warmer. That's awesome. <laughs> The hard part is getting a good seal and it only stays for a little bit before it shoots off my hand. Whoa, there we go. I'm trying to get that rocket hand. <laughs> there it went. So you can measure it in your thermometer, but what's really cool about this is that I can actually feel the air getting warmer. As soon as it catches my arm and starts pressurizing, I can feel the air instantly get really warm. It's really cool. Okay, so why is it that a change in volume like that increases temperature? Well, the answer is the first law of thermodynamics. And I feel like every answer I give you is due to the first law of thermodynamics. So the first law of thermodynamics basically says that energy can't be created or destroyed. So basically the change in energy of a system has to equal the change in heat plus the change in work. 
So for this system, there's no change in heat because we do it so fast that there's not enough time for the heat to diffuse from the hot air inside to the colder air outside. And so the change in heat is zero. So this change is zero. And the change in work is just equal to the pressure times the change in volume. And in general, the change in energy of a system is just equal to the some constant times the change in temperature. So basically the final equation you get is some constant times the change in temperature equals minus the pressure times the change in volume. And so when we hit this down, this change in volume is negative. So basically we get that the change in temperature is some positive number, so an increase in temperature. So that's an easy proof of why when you decrease the volume, the temperature goes up in a system. So if you enjoyed this video and you like my channel, you'll love Brilliant.org. So Brilliant.org is a cool problem solving website that teaches you how to think like a scientist and a physicist. So you can dive in and solve easy to challenging problems in their guided sequences on their website. So to support the Action Lab, go to brilliant.org slash the Action Lab to sign up for free. But if you'd like to sign up for their premium subscription, the first 200 people that click the link in my description will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out, and leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comments section, and I'll try to get to them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.